My tale begins at the end of the world. Retreat back to base, Coffee. I repeat, retreat! <laughs> CFG, this is actual. You need to move zones. I repeat, move what? zones. The zombies are mutating. Wait, Wait what do you mean mutating? Wait, no! No! Life has changed forever. Hordes of the undead roam our streets and they mutate by the day, changing their forms to become some of the strongest, most difficult enemies I have ever faced. Mercenaries and scavengers roam our lands, fighting the undead, but also each other. Their bases are scattered throughout the world, filled with some of the highest tier weaponry I want to get my hands on to fight the evil hordes. I have three goals. My first goal is to create an army of mercenaries of my own. The second is to construct a giant base filled with automated sentry weapons. My third goal, kill the parasitic leader, stop the mutations and claim back our land. Day one, lost in the zombified wasteland, we start our journey. I'm the coffee fuel genius, let's get to work. I took my first steps on this apocalyptic journey. Heading into the wasteland and surveying the area, it was time to kick off with the basics and grab some wood. But then I encountered a problem. The wood here is dead and wouldn't craft anything. This was going to be a lot more difficult than I anticipated. I then ventured further into the wasteland and stumbled across a mercenary outpost. So I headed over, jumping over ravines and hopping over sandy dunes. I finally made it. I came across two mercenaries outside, one of them being healed up by the medic. He informed me that he had been separated from his search party and asked if I would head into a nearby city and find the rest of his team. So I agreed, headed out and found the nearby city. But then I was ambushed by the very team I was looking for. They had been infected, turned into ravenous zombies. I had to get away as soon as possible. I sprinted towards the city. I guess I'd have to tell the mercenary the fate of his friends. However, not just yet. I grabbed some food, grabbed some wood, and made a crafting table. The sun was setting and I was running out of time. I had to craft a bunch of basic tools as quick as possible. Grabbing more wood and grabbing more food, I headed deep into the city. I could hear the zombies coming. I decided to hold refuge in a nearby building, entering very hesitantly, keeping my wits about me. But then a zombie ambushed me! One strike, two strikes! Three strikes, the zombie was down, but then another one appeared. I took them both out, blocked the door, but then I realized I was surrounded. The zombies were trying to break through the glass. I was absolutely terrified. They were surrounding me. I guess I was here for the night. The undead were piling up left, right, and center. Everywhere I turned, death faced me. There was no way out of here alive, so I had to think on my feet. It was time to get tactical. I placed a crafting table and made a wooden shovel and headed down. I thought if I could at least get my hands on some stone, I would be more equipped to take on the undead. But then things got shaky. I was attacked by a skeleton! Oh no! Oh! I had to strike him quickly! One and a half hearts, it could all end here! I struck down the zombie, blocked the hole, and headed deeper underground, getting my hands on some coal. I finally had some light, but it wasn't over. A zombie squeezed through and started dealing some serious damage. I struck him down with my wooden sword. Oh, that was a close one, but I was still surrounded by hundreds of zombies. I crafted some stone tools, placed a furnace, and started cooking up my food. I took a serious beating underground, almost losing my life. I only had two chunks of meat to chew on, but I guess it'll have to do for now. I had to regenerate as much health as possible. Oh, now it's time to get moving. I kicked the doors open and sprinted across, heading into the opposing building, hoping to get my hands on some loot. Speed was key here. I investigated the maze-like corridors as quick as possible, taking on the enemies as I saw them. And eventually, I came across a chest. A survivor must have passed away here and left behind some loot, and inside it was a weapon and a small amount of ammo. This was key to my survival. But then I heard something. I heard a dog. It was risky, but I followed the sound anyway, hoping to find the source of the noise. I couldn't believe it. I almost teared up. It was a little puppy. She'd been trapped here. I tamed her and promised that I would always protect her. She had no idea the impact that she would have on this journey. Bonding time was over though. We teamed up and escaped through a nearby window in hopes to find some food. I would return to the building later. I ended up finding some cows but thought I'd save my bullets and instead use my sword to strike them down and grab some meat. But then we came across some mercenaries. 
There was no way I was taking these guys on. So instead, I ran back to the building and decided to hold up shelter for the night. I made sure the doggo was okay, and then I defended against the undead with the little ammo that I had. It was a long, hard, difficult night, but at least we had food. I will do anything to keep this dog alive. Day three, it was time to head deeper into the city and see if we could find any more loot. I decided to call my puppy Rex. Thought it was a pretty cool name. It was now time to head into the city. The next step in our 100 days journey wasn't going to be easy. Nature had taken its toll and was overgrown everywhere. We chopped through it and made it into the skyscraper. The aim was to get to the top so we could get a better view of the city. But then I was ambushed. The undead are ruthless and in packs, they can be very dangerous. The zombies continued to attack me and I used my pistol to take them out. My accuracy was insane, however, once I ran out of ammo, I was screwed. I was taking some serious damage and didn't even get time to heal. I managed to make it down a floor, but then I was attacked by a bunch of spiders and had no choice but to jump. Oh, I survived. I sprinted as far away as possible. Me and Rex just didn't know what to do. We refused to end our 100 days here, so we waited till morning and then striked once again. We took on hordes and hordes of zombies all night, but then once we saw the opportunity, we sprinted towards the front door, dodging the zombies as they attacked me and then managed to block up the door as I entered. A genius move, if I do say so myself. I then climbed the ladder to the top, took out a few skeletons and then surveyed the area. Me and Rex found a zombie here. It seemed to be a survivor that had turned. I had no choice but to take him out if I was going to survive. I couldn't believe it. We made it to the top of the skyscraper. This was crucial for our progression on this 100 days journey. During my inspection of the area, I located a book that the survivor had left behind. I guess this is it, where it all ends. Please, whoever finds this, find my family. We got split up back at the village. I may have met my fate, but I know they're alive. I can feel it. They have supplies. And so there it was, our next task. Locate the village and find those supplies. I made my way to the edge of the skyscraper to take a good look around. This 100 days apocalyptic journey was about to get intense. We scattered through the rooftops, taking as much loot as possible and grabbing some spare food. I was making sure Rex was okay every step of the way. I spent nightfall looting buildings and managed to get my hands on some great weaponry. But once again, the undead were relentless. I took on waves and waves of the infected, but then I almost lost my life to a skeleton. He got me down to just one heart. I had to think on my feet. I quickly ate up my steak, looked at the area. Oh no, I took a sprint, 180. Oh, what a good shot. Man, I'm getting good at this. I then fed Rex and took a look out and found the village. Next step, make it to the village alive. Day five was here and the infected had already mutated. Wolves were now ravenous monsters. Look at him, hunting for my scent. I thought I was okay until this moment. I cut myself on the glass. I had no choice but to head down. He had my scent. He was ready to attack. I took a deep breath. I ran. I had to run as fast as possible. He was running after me. I sprinted towards the village, running as fast as I could, but I could feel him right behind me. He hit me. I had to run as fast as possible, but then I made a mistake, jumping into a hole. Oh no, this could be it. The hundred days could end here. I ran and I ran, and I managed to make it inside one of the houses. But then he hit me through the wall. I couldn't believe it. But then he lost my scent and ran away. I spoke with the villager, then looked out towards the city I just ran from. It was time to start making some real progress. I placed a couple of furnaces, cooked up some food, and made sure Rex and I had full bellies. I managed to climb up to a vantage point and take a look around, and I saw that already humans were becoming infected. Look at him, a parasitical monster. I then inspected the town and found myself an iron sword and some iron leggings. Some serious progress made. I then found the survivors that Fru had mentioned in his letter and promised them I would take care of them all. I then took some wood and made a bed. Oh, an extremely busy few days, but there was a lot more to come. Oh, I cannot tell you how nice it is not to be sprinting away from the undead for once. I did a little bit of resource collection, took a look at the food, and then found an area in which I'd go mining later on. I then took up refuge in this small little house. It was a temporary base before I build my big one. 
I stored my things and then found the area in which I would start building my giant base. I guess we could call this new place our home, but in the meantime, I made a shield and went mining. Even Rex was pretty delighted. Anyway, on with the work. If you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I love my mining, the twinkle of XP, the collection of ores, the sweet coziness of the caves. It'll never get old. I just adore it. Me and Rex were having a great time. Whilst I go cave exploring, I just want to take the time to thank each and every single one of you that watches my videos. You have changed my life in more ways than I could have ever imagined. Every like, every subscription, every comment helps me out more than you know, so thank you so much. Anyways, <laughs> on with the video. I made a sort of hub area in which I could collect and smelt all the things I was collecting. As you can see, I finally crafted an iron pick and then got to work collecting redstone, coal, a bunch of ores. I literally mined for like days and then I went strip mining on the hunt for diamonds. Yes, I encountered a few enemies, but it wasn't too much to take on. And then finally, you guessed it. Oh, diamonds, my favorite. Ooh, gimme, gimme, gimme. I love diamonds so much. Honestly, the twinkly sound will never get old. Ah, oh, a huge milestone on this 100 days journey. I dedicated some serious time to diamond collection and stone and ore collection. I even came across some lapis, which was a bonus. And then I spoke with the mercenary and managed to get my hands on some Australian ingots, which would allow me to craft turrets, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, back up top. Oh wait, what's going on? The town was being attacked by zombies! This was my moment to prove myself to the villagers that I could defend them. Me and Rex did our best to take on the horde of zombies. Using my sword and shield, I battled the infected. But it wasn't as easy as I thought. Both me and Rex were under a lot of fire. I couldn't get to Rex. I was worried she would lose her life. No, Rex, you can do it. Oh, thank goodness. Rex defended herself and I took on the last few zombies. Oh, I fed her some rotten flesh and made sure she was okay. Great work. Oh, man, I can never really relax. This is so annoying. It's not all bad though, I finally crafted a full set of diamond armor. Woohoo! But I also accidentally crafted another set of diamond boots, so I can't even make a pickaxe. Meh. Anyways, I made myself a chisel because I wanted to create some really beautiful blocks. I then headed out and did a bunch of resource collection because, yep, you guessed it, after terraforming the ground, it was time to build my new base. It was a long process and took a lot of resources, but I finally built the outside wall. Oh no! A blood moon! A parasitic swarm entered the town and started causing havoc, and the ravenous dogs returned, hunting my scent, trying to kill me. I took him out pretty quickly though, and watched as he exploded in front of me. Mercenaries came and aided me with the defense. I had to do everything in my power to make sure the town was safe, also while staying alive. This could be it! It could all end here! I did my best defending against the parasitic monsters, but even zombies appeared! I didn't know what to do! It was havoc! We did everything that we could to survive. The mercenaries battled the undead all night, but these parasitic monsters, they were ruthless. They just kept coming and coming. Fire, rockets, nothing would stop them. I fleed back to my base and watched as the destruction continued. I guess I was stuck here for the night. I was waiting for the blood moon to pass, hoping that we would make it out alive. <laughs> I'm joking. I just like to be dramatic. We were okay the next morning, the blood moon had passed, and while after taking a look at the devastation caused, it was time to carry on building my base. I was really happy with how the base was turning out. This would be an excellent facility in which my army of mercenaries could sit back and relax. The next step, well that was to make sentry weapons. Now I didn't have all the resources in the world, but I did have enough to make a couple. So I placed the first one, assigned it aggressive mode and took a look. It was pretty beasty, I have to admit. I then placed another automated sentry outside. Look at this, I was feeling like an absolute king. 
I then dedicated some time to connecting the buildings with paths and then lighting up the area to ensure mobs wouldn't spawn. I then used a bunch of bone mill to make the place look really lived in. Then I did a bit of farming and then planned my next steps on how I was going to build a mercenary army. But before that, I have a name tag. Yes, I found this bad boy down in the cave, so I thought it was suitable to give it to Rex. Eh, look at that. Finally, you have your name. And then I got some sleep. Ah, solid few days. The next day I crafted pickaxes and torches and headed underground in the hunt for more of those special ingots. Yeah, it was a pretty straightforward ordeal, I just needed more ingots because I need them to make sentries and start hiring mercenaries. I ran into a few enemies here and there, but it wasn't too much to handle. Whilst I was cave exploring, I stumbled across a secret hideout. Floodlights, a broken radio and a chest filled with loot. Weapons, armor, the whole lot, it was incredible. This was a great step forward on our 100 days journey. I was feeling more powerful than ever. I then headed underground in a hunt for more diamonds. I mined and I mined and grabbed a bunch of resources, fed Rex and then headed back up top to smelt my special ingots. Some incredible progress made, let's go! With more sentry guns crafted, it was now time to place them around the base and watch as they deployed and defended. My base's defense was impenetrable, I was feeling unstoppable and I could ensure that my mercenaries would be safe inside the base. I then got some sleep. The night's terrors stood no match for my sentry weapons and now it was time to head out and start building my mercenary army. I had plenty of cash to pay these guys so they would stay loyal and I built my army mercenary by mercenary then headed back to my base. Everybody was settling in and I was really proud of the progress I had made. However, I told everybody to stay put because I needed to plan my next steps. The next step was to get into the city. I needed to be more prepared if I was to take on the Parasite King and Queen. On paper, it was easy. However, the execution deemed more difficult than I could have ever imagined. I was swarmed by mercenaries left, right and center. But these guys weren't friendly and me and my army had to defend against their attacks. It wasn't all bad though, I managed to snatch up some great loot and continued into the city fighting the enemy mercenaries. Oh no, I was on fire! We were under attack! My troops and I did our best to defend the area, however I lost all of my friends. Only Rex stood alive and then I got into some serious trouble. I was stuck in quicksand. Oh no, Rex! Oh, this could be it! I quickly built up some wood as a defense because the grenade launcher was just too powerful. Rex was taking some serious damage, so I managed to get him out of there and send him home, but I was still stuck. What was I going to do? I had to think tactically. I managed to get out, dodge the grenade launcher, and take him out. Oh, that was close, but the sun was setting. I had to rush home quickly before the enemy started attacking me. I made it home, but I realized that I would need a lot more troops if I was going to be successful in looting the city, so I went out and hired a bunch more mercenaries to fight for me. Feeling more secure, I took myself and my troops, Rex included, and headed towards the city. We did face some enemies, but it wasn't too much to tackle because there was a lot of us. But then, things got seriously dangerous. All of my troops were wiped out. I only had those left back at the base, but I couldn't call for reinforces. Five giant mutants attacked me. One heart left. Oh no! I ran and I ran, firing my grenade launcher at the mutants and the zombies, in hopes to survive. These colossal mutant beasts just wouldn't stay down. I would hit them and hit them and they'd only fall and get back up again, twice as strong. I strategically circled around the mutants, popping shots, but they were enraged. I decided I couldn't stay here. I had to lead them back to the base. Yes, where my mercenaries were. I led the horde of zombies and mutant beasts back to my base, dodging their hits. It was a close one, but I managed to make it back and allowed my sentry turrets to do the work. The mutant dropped an incredibly powerful hammer. Whew, that was a close one. I checked on the rest of my troops and then I got a good night's rest. The morning was here, the sun was blazing high, and I crafted a bunch of diamond tools and made a few adjustments to my base. I then took a couple of guys out with me, grabbed some wheat, and hoped to grab a few farm animals. It was quite nice to get out for the day. I managed to find a couple of cows, breed them together, and then use a lead to bring them back to the base. This would allow me to make more meat. Oh, look at his little face, leading him into the base. He's so happy. Oh. I made sure they were okay, checked on Rex, and was pretty proud of my progress. 
I had an army of mercenaries, a fully functional base with defense systems. The next step was to kill the parasite leaders. So I headed out, grabbed some food on the way, and headed in to the city. I spent a lot of time taking out enemies and looting the buildings. It was quite nice, actually. I've been trying to get into this city for ages, so to finally get here and loot was pretty nice. I managed to get my hands on some pretty cool weaponry, which I was pretty happy with. It was now time to hunt down the parasite leaders, so I headed out across the zombified wasteland in hopes to prevent the mutations. I fed Rex some food, changed my armor, and approached the parasite king. Look at him, so mighty, so fierce. I headed in. His colossal stature was incredibly intimidating, and as he approached me, he did some serious damage. I managed to pop a few shots, but it wasn't doing enough to take him out. He was even sending his minions after me. We battled and battled through night and day. Me and Rex did our best to try and take him out, and eventually, with a few hits, we destroyed the Parasite King. But it wasn't over. The Parasite Queen had awoken and fired poisonous capsules towards me and Rex. But I dodged her hits. She seemed invincible and wasn't taking any damage. After dodging her parasites, I finally took out the Parasite Queen. Rex almost lost her life. I cleared up the area of the remaining parasites and then started heading home. What a journey we've been on. Me and Rex looked out towards the landscape. We had been through so much together. I could even see my base and village from here. I headed back, said hello to my troops, and rested up for the night. So there it was, 100 days survived and all my objectives completed. As always, I've been the Coffee Fuel Genius. Thanks for watching. Peace.